pressure switches, a couple different kinds of pressure switches. This happens to be for commercial refrigeration here. Sometimes you'll use them for fan controls. This is what you're going to see most often on residential equipment. It's just basically a, uh, it screws on to the pressure port of the refrigeration lines, and then it makes or breaks based on the pressure of the, uh, the design pressure of the switch. Same thing here as the temperature controlled switch. This is the indication of a pressure switch. When you see it like in this, in this orientation, as the pressure increases, it pushes that switch open. As it decreases, that switch will close. Same thing on this one. This is close on rise in pressure. So if the pressure is pushing up on that little cup and at the design closing pressure, this switch will be closed. As the pressure falls, it, it eases up that pressure on that little cup and it will open up that switch. Once again, there's, they're only in one position on the um, schematic diagram. In most HVAC equipment, the pressure switches, residential HVAC equi equipment, I should say, the pressure switches are safety devices, so they are normally closed. And if the pressure in the system gets too high, it's going to pop that switch open and stop everything to pr protect the compressor. Same thing if we get the pressures get too low, it's going to pop it open right here and uh, stop the equipment to pr protect the compressor. Misters, we're going to see these more and more with the with equipment that is of higher efficiencies and more complex. These are small devices that change resistance with temperature. They're connected to control boards and the control board uh, microprocessor and brains are going to make something happen based on the resistance of this thermistor. Most of the time they are strapped to our refrigeration piping. They may be um, wedged into the coils. The outdoor temperature sensor sometimes is just dangling in the outdoor air. The thermistors that have a positive temperature coefficient, as the temperature increases, the resistance increases on, the, on that thermistor. A negative temperature coefficient thermistor, as temperature decreases, resistance increases. Now, almost all manufacturers will have their um, breakdown of the thermistor and or you can get it from them so if it's for example if it's seven is in a 75 degree condition it's going to read 1500 ohms that's and then if it's 80 on a positive temperature coefficient it might read 1570 ohms i'll do i'll do a uh I'll do a separate video on thermistors and do some uh, resistance measurements and show you the chart from that. But this is the schematic symbol for a thermistor. And there are others, but this is a pretty common one. It looks pretty similar to a heater and a coil and everything else. But key here is you got to look at that um, little T on this one or whatever symbol is on here, you're going to have to go to the legend and and figure out what this diagram represents. But that's a thermistor. It's a device that changes resistance based on temperature. Okay, let's look at the legend. I think then we're gonna call it quits. So here is a legend. You'll find them on every schematic diagram. Kind of took this one, this part of the legend right here and blew it up. So what you would do is IF is the indoor fan motor. So you're going to be looking on the schematic diagram for IF, and there it is. 